Hey, this is Tim. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the banjo minnow. It seems to be uh, quite a misunderstood bait, um, but uh, in my experience I've found that if it's used in the right application it can really catch fish. So uh, I'm going to start by quickly just going through a little bit about the characteristics of the banjo minnow that I think make it a good lure, um, some of the things I don't like maybe, and, uh, and, and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. So, this is the newer banjo minnow. I don't know the number or whatever they call it. I don't know. But, uh, anyways, you can get it online. You can get it in stores. Uh, it's anywhere between fifteen and twenty dollars, and you get something ridiculous like a, like a hundred different pieces that go with the kit. Um, it comes with various sizes of the minnow. It comes with um, the eyes for attaching the hook to the bait, it comes with the hooks, and it comes with the weed guards, which are essentially just little rubber bands. So, um, the first thing I have to say about this bait is that it has its application. It's like any other lure. It's not going to work all the time. It's not going to work in every instance. And there's going to be certain things that it is better at using it for than, than, than other lures. Um, so my favorite type of fishing using the banjo minnow is in shallow lakes or ponds, like farm ponds or park ponds, things that are small bodies of water that are relatively shallow, that have a lot of vegetation and maybe some pockets and stuff that, uh, that you might be able to fish. So that's been the majority of my experience using this bait and it's been very productive for that and I think a lot of the videos you tend to see online tend to be people using them in smaller bodies of water where they're basically just casting from the shore but you know that's not exclusive but um, I have seen on TV I have seen um, professional fishermen at times use this in larger lakes um, I think Babe Winkleman is right on the package for it um, I used it once, or I've used it a couple times actually up in Canada fishing for northern pike and um, I was using the larger, obviously the larger version, the larger minnow and I, I, did, I did have some success with it um, but the majority of my experience has been that using it in a farm pond or a small pond tends to be the most fun place to use this and the most productive and I've caught some big bass on it. I've caught bass that are um, 16, 17, 18, 19 inch, 20 inch bass on this thing in, in ponds and in small lakes. So, um, one of the things that uh, I, I, I really like about it is the fact that um, in this new version they've put these joints in the plastic and what those joints do is they, they really give it a little more flexibility so that it tends to flip around a lot when you're using it. Um, the other thing they did was they, they came up with some pretty nice colors. Um, they've got these transparent like colors with flecks of shiny plastic in them. Um, they've also got more opaque colors that are, are more colorful. Um, and they've also got different sizes. The kit comes with um, these little like three inch ones. It comes with, I don't know what these are, like four or five inch and then these are like maybe six, five, or five to six inch, I don't know the sizes, but anyways, it comes with a bunch of hooks, it comes with a bunch of these eyes, it, um, it comes with a bunch of the wee guards, it's, it's pretty nice, pretty sweet deal for, for 15 bucks, especially um, if you were, you know, if you were just looking to go have some fun like that in a farm pond or something, this is, this is a great, great lure, and so anyways, um, what I understand, I, I think I have this correctly, is the, the clearer ones, um, tend to be uh, more of a sink, more of a denser plastic, so they, they sink, I think. I could, this could be the exact opposite, I'm not positive. So they tend to sink, and the more opaque ones tend to be like a lighter, less dense plastic, so they tend to float a little better. So, um, one of the... Uh, one of the biggest complaints that I've seen about these lures online so far is that 
they don't have their own they don't have any action whatsoever the fisherman has to impart all the action to the bait um, that is true to a certain extent however like I was saying with the grooves in the plastic now um, it, it does tend to do a lot more like tail wagging and stuff when it when it swims and it it helps it look a lot more like a wounded bait fish um, when they first the, the, the first edition of this lure um, and I have a couple I have a, 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 I bought a kit of the original they looked like this and you can see that there's no there's no ridges there's no grooves cut into it um, I did like these because they tended to look a little bit more like a real bait fish you can see that the head and everything is kind of proportional um, these newer ones they're a little funky looking because they have a big like a big giant head on them which it helps in rigging them but and it helps it with the action but it doesn't quite look as realistic but I found that it doesn't it doesn't really matter um, so these older versions they were okay they were nice except in order to rig them you had to screw um, a screw eye into the nose of the bait and then you had to hook the hook onto that and then you had to hook the rubber band onto that and it just tended to be kind of cumbersome and you had to have a lot of stuff with you so they have simplified that a little bit now um, getting back to the idea that this thing doesn't seem to have any um, it doesn't seem to have any action of its own I don't feel that that's a very fair criticism of the bait because um, if you look at other baits there are a lot of baits where the fisherman is required to impart action to the bait on his own or on her own on their own um, this is a good example this is this is a zoom fluke very popular um, very productive bait people love them uh, but they don't do anything hardly by their own they got a little tail that kind of wags but for the most part you have to jig this thing up and down a little bit or make it give it action to make it represent an injured bait fish which impo which uh, gets the fish to strike this is another good example one of the greatest topwater lures of all time the head and spook it does nothing you just cast this thing out and you reel it in it does nothing you have to jerk the rod in order to give it its side to side walk the dog action but it's a fantastic bait the banjo minnow is no different. So, um, the difference uh, with one difference with the banjo minnow, I should say, is how the hook is actually rigged to the bait. I'm going to show you how to rig it up now. Um, they have these different eyes they give you, and the different eyes, the, the plastic, they have the plastic ones are different colors. The plastic ones are lighter. Over here. Plastic ones are lighter, so if you want something that's going to stay close to the surface or sink more slowly, you're going to use those the black ones here are metal and so they're heavier and they'll cause it to sink they'll also make it a little easier to cast um, it can be a little light if it doesn't have a lot because it doesn't have a lot of weight to it um, I found the majority of my fishing when I've been fishing in small ponds and stuff I tend to gravitate towards the smaller size this is like the three inch size I wish it was a little bit longer but it seems to work just fine once you start getting up into these bigger sizes um, they'll work for bigger bass but if you're catching smaller fish um, most people don't want to but I mean you just never know but it seems like uh, a little hors d'oeuvre like this seems to be more appealing to those fish than, than sometimes some of these bigger ones if you're fishing in a big lake for bigger fish I certainly would try and use these but the majority of my fishing with this has been with these, these smaller ones because it's just kind of like a little morsel that the fish like to, like to just eat up it doesn't seem to matter what size fish they, they, they'll eat it. My favorite color by far is the white. Um, I use that just about all the time. Sometimes I'll use the chartreuse if it's dark day or um, murkier water conditions, but for the most part I like to fish I like to fish the white. Sometimes I'll try the, 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 the clear colored ones, the speckled ones, but I found that the white just produces and just about the white just produces in just about every just about every circumstance um, how I like to fish these is um, I tend to be very visual when I fish for these that's another reason I like using the brighter colors if I'm fishing in shallow water what I like to do is I like to literally cast it out 
and I'll plop this right on top of a uh, patch of lily pads and I'll drag it over the top and I'll let it fall down in the pockets between the pads or between um, if you've got weeds that are close to the surface I'll let it fall down in the pockets in the weeds and that's usually where the fish are waiting and they'll hit it once it falls down but I found that it is nice because they do tend to just kind of engulf this thing but they don't exactly come up and like nail it every time they probably could but in my in my experience it seems like they are a little more finessey when they eat these um, so they do try to grab them and they try to like turn them around in their mouth and so <clears throat> it's helpful to be able to see them a little bit so polarized fishing glasses or sunglasses um, and uh, the ability to see them is is good because I noticed that when I see I'm reeling in and it just I just notice it looks like it's disappearing and the line is kind of moving and whatnot and then I'll know that it's time to set the hook. I have obviously used it just without being able to see it and it does work. I have no problem with doing it that way. I just find that I like it better when I can actually see it because I find that I can really uh, just really uh, get, get the fish a lot easier when I can. Um, one of the other complaints about the banjo minnow is that is the rigging system. Um, I've used, you know, some people claim that these plastic eyes, the way they rig, they break too easily. I haven't had one break yet. I don't really use the metal ones too much because I generally fish in shallower water. But if I was, I mean, I would use them. If I was in deeper water, I would use them. Um, my favorite by far is the, is the red plastic eyes with the white little, little guy, little minnow. Um, I would obviously you know use the same eyes for all the different baits so as far as rigging them um, that's another complaint that I've heard about them is is the fact that they're hard to rig and but it's like anything else if you if you've got a rig if you're gonna rig a zoo a fluke Texas style Texas rig style or a plastic worm Texas rig style it's not gonna be easy and you're gonna have to once in a while the, you're gonna get hooked on stuff and the hooks gonna pull through and you're gonna have to readjust the hook I'm constantly readjusting. When I use flukes and when I use creature baits and stuff, I'm constantly readjusting the hook to make sure that it's in the perfect spot that if a fish takes it, that they're gonna that they're gonna get the hook and it's not gonna and it's not gonna get snagged while I'm while I'm reeling it in or, or working it through the weeds. So you know, a lot of times, I tend to use these these wa these weighted worm hooks or just just regular just a regular worm hook and. Uh, you know, those work fine for those baits. Um, the banjo minnow, they give you, they give you these hooks. Um, I don't think that it's unique to the banjo minnow. This is a style of hook that I've seen that you can just buy. Um, but the, the shape of it helps helps give it its uh, ability to not get snagged and to hold on to the bait in a straight, keep it kind of in a straight line. So I'm going to show you how. Obviously, I'm not going to go through the whole thing here because you can watch any number of videos to show you how to rig a banjo minnow. But anyways, it's pretty simple. It's pretty quick. You just, you literally just push. You can't really see what I'm doing here, but you literally just push the eyes right in there. They're in. You can see, you can see the little, little things sticking out the end there. You're going to take the hook. It's just slip it right through that little opening snap and it's rigged now if you're not using it in an area with a lot of weeds you can leave it just like this that's pretty quick rigging if you ask me if you're using an area that has a lot of weeds you gotta take one of these weed guards pull it on there hook it on the eye of the hook and then and this is the part that took Takes, sometimes takes a little while to kind of get the hang of. I've kind of developed a technique here where you know, you know what I should do? I should do it so you can see it. I wasn't watching the camera. <clears throat> a little technique here. Well, I just grab it and I just pull it back here and it hooks on the barb of the hook. And now that's rigged and it's relatively weedless. This isn't a perfect weedless system. If it does get caught on heavy weeds, it will just pop that rubber band. I found as the rubber band gets a little older, um, you, you sometimes gotta you gotta keep adjusting it after uh, every couple casts. Sometimes every cast, you gotta put it back on there. It can be a little frustrating. It can be a little discouraging. 
but the fact that this thing catches fish makes me persist with it. If um, if I was using an area where the weeds were thin, and I have this weed guard doesn't it doesn't it doesn't move at all. Um, it just stays in one spot, and I just leave it there. Now, I've also heard people complain that the hook is only in the front, whereas if you were if you were rigging a fluke. You know, you'd be rigging the fluke, and the hook would be sticking out. You know, it'd be way in the back. So if they, if a fish grabbed it, they would grab the hook farther back. I found that that has never been a problem with this bait. I, um, like I said, I, sometimes I watch. Or a lot of times I watch the fish take the bait. And you can see it disappearing. And what fish do is they have a tendency and they have instinctual um, habit of trying to swallow the bait head first. So if you ever watch videos of like pike or bass hitting things, a lot of times they'll swing around and they'll actually grab the bait from the front. They'll grab the bait from the head. And that's another good thing about, I forgot to mention about these big eyes. The big eyes now are much better. It gives, it gives the fish a target. To, to, to aim for up near up near the actual hook so I haven't found that it's been a problem whatsoever um, I've caught dozens and dozens and dozens of bass on these lures and um, the fact that the hook is in the front has never been the reason why I haven't gotten them I mean usually it's just because maybe the hook wasn't in good enough and it, it came out when they jumped or something but it really it had literally had nothing to do with the hook being in the front they tend to get the whole bait sometimes even if they grab it from the side you know they grab it from the side here it, it, it like bends it like bends the bait in half like this and the hooks right there ready to get them if they grab it big enough they could grab it from behind obviously and get the hook the bigger fish tend to actually come and swing around and grab it near the front anyways so I found that's not a problem whatsoever so that oh, I didn't I forgot to mention that in this latest one they also came out with this color which is actually glow in the dark I haven't had a chance to use it yet but it seems like it has it's a good it could have a good application seeing as glow in the dark stuff is so popular now so anyways as far as as far as baits go overall I certainly would not discourage you from purchasing the Banjo Minnow kit. For $15 to $20, you get like a whole bunch of these baits. You get all the different colors. You get all the rigging. You get everything you need. Um, and aside from being a little hard to rig, um, as compared to, well, whatever, as compared to a lot of other lures where you can just tie them on and go. Um, but it's like any other plastic. Sometimes it just needs uh, you just need to be use a little more skill and be a little more patient and um, <clears throat> just just learn how to use it. And I'm telling you, it's going to produce for you. So, anyways, I, I hope this helped. I hope that um, the people who are have negative um, feelings about the banjo minnow. Um, give it a give it more of a chance uh, it's funny that you'll see videos online you'll see people that are they're, they're saying um, I'm gonna use the banjo minnow this thing looks ridiculous and then the next thing they do is they go out and start catching fish <laughs> so um, I think those videos are kind of funny um, because it's it's just a producing bait um, I like the zoom fluke I'm, I'm sure if you were to take something like a fluke and go and do the same thing it would probably produce um, but the fact that the fact that you get so many baits for just like fifteen dollars, um, I think it's a great deal too, and um, and I love it. And I often joke with my buddies, I, I, I use a bunch of other lures, and I, I, I'll say, "Well, the fish have had it good enough for long enough. It's time to put the banjo minnow on." And then I start catching fish. Um, why don't I start with it earlier? I don't know because I guess I want to see if some of my other baits. I have hundreds of baits. I guess I want to see if they work, but. Ultimately, if I went to um, a farm pond or a park pond or a small body of water and I was just fishing from shore, if I was looking to catch some bass, I'm going to take the banjo minnow kit. I'm going to maybe take some flukes. I might take some creature baits or like some frogs, rubber frogs, stuff like that. But um, nine times out of ten, I'm going with this banjo minnow. And it, I find that it's interesting that um, I've caught I've caught fish on this in a lot of different situations. 
Um, I've, I've fished in small lakes where there isn't a lot of weeds and where the bass seem to be feeding on a, a majority of their diet seems to be minnow type um, minnows and small fish and so obviously that's going to produce something like this is going to produce very well in those circumstances and it has. I found that even in ponds where there's not a lot of bait fish and they're eating a lot of frogs and crayfish and things like that they still go for this thing and I don't know maybe it's just because it, it it mimics um, it mimics a wounded bait fish or, or a dying or an injured bait fish so well that um, they just can't resist. Like they say in the videos for this thing, um, they're instinctual. They're instinctually uh, wired to strike at a dying fish, and that's exactly what they do. So, if you've got like a kid or something that really wants to get into bass fishing and you want to get a whole bunch of lures for him at once, I tell you that this this kid is is the way to go. But anyways, just that said, um, just the fact that it does produce, and it's um, it's a reasonably priced lure, I don't see why there's any reason why people wouldn't like this this bait. Um, it's one of my favorites. I use it all the time. I never go anywhere without it, and and that's pretty much it. So I hope this is uh, maybe helped dispel some of the myths about the banjo minnow, both good and bad, um, but. I totally recommend you go out and get one and try using it, and uh, I, I guarantee you you won't be disappointed once you once you get the hang of using it. So, thanks a lot and um, good luck. Good luck fishing.